Gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, honor of speaking before the City Club. And um, also thank you for all the good work that all of you do in bringing really important issues to the forefront in Eugene. And thank you co for coming out on such a uh, beautiful day outside. It's good to see you here. Uh, Metro is a nonprofit, 501c3. Uh, our mission is to build high quality, affordable housing and also to pro provide services that help individuals achieve both personal and economic independence. As a uh, bit of background, I lived in uh, Eugene in the 70s and 80s, and then I moved away and lived in the Midwest in the 90s. And in 2000, I came back to Eugene, and I'm back to stay living in this beautiful uh, Willamette Valley. But when I came back, I uh, was looking for housing, and I decided that a condo project uh, might be a good choice for me. So I started driving around, looking at communities, thinking where I might want to live. And I discovered the Woodleaf townhouses in South Eugene. And I noticed they were very high quality. Uh, I noticed they had uh, front porches, back decks. They had a community center with a play area. And I could see myself living in this community. But I also discovered that it wasn't a, an affordable housing community. It was, uh, I mean, it wasn't a condo project. It was, in fact, an affordable housing community, a housing community that uh, Metropolitan Affordable Housing developed uh, and uh, opened in 1898. And uh, Jean Tate isn't here, I see, but if Jean's listening, I just want to thank her for all the work she did for Metro and also thank her for all the uh, important work she continues to do in our community. I'm really proud of my association with Metro, our board of directors, uh, the cities of Eugene and Springfield, Lane County, and all of the collaborative partners and volunteers we have the pleasure of working with. Affordable, affordable housing uh, is both uh, is, is for people living on in limited incomes. Uh, it includes both single family homes and multifamily apartments. And affordable housing is really widely dispersed throughout our community. And who lives in affordable housing? Well, they're working families who have jobs, but oftentimes don't make enough money to make it all work. Uh, they provide health care. They work in restaurants. They provide daycare to our children. They work in a multiple multitude of uh, occupations. There are single moms uh, trying to work, uh, provide child care or pay for child care, and perhaps going to school at night. There are seniors living on fixed incomes. There are those experiencing some type of disability that limits their capacity to work. And in recent times, there are also families who have lost their homes through foreclosure as a result of our financial crisis. They are veterans and the veterans' families who have uh, given to our country and now earn, have earned our support. There are friends and neighbors, our parents and grandparents, there are sons and daughters. Studies show that across the nation, there's a general consensus that affordable housing is needed and is in fact a good investment. However, some of those same studies also show that there's a significant number of people that really don't want affordable housing too close to where they live. And there are three major reasons why I want affordable housing in our community. There's three reasons why I say yes, yes to affordable housing in my backyard. First, <coughs> affordable housing in our community is of very, very high quality. The second reason, affordable housing is about economic development and creating a strong economy. And the third reason, offering affordable housing to those who are facing challenging times is the right thing to do, and it's also in our economic self-interest. So why is affordable housing such qu high quality, the housing that uh, providers in our community are building? While most market rate housing is built for 10-year ownership, the affordable housing is built for 60-year home ownership. That's a requirement by the state of Oregon. So we must build higher quality projects for longevity. We use higher grades of, of building materials for both interiors and exteriors of buildings. We engage professional building uh, architects and landscape architects to fully landscape properties uh, to fit into existing neighborhoods. So like my first experience at Woodleaf, where I couldn't distinguish between the market rate 
and affordable, uh, you'll find that same thing to be true. And uh, I'm happy to give anyone a tour of uh, housing communities, affordable housing communities, and I believe someone has a sign-up sheet, in fact, if you want to sign up. <coughs> I said uh, affordable housing is about economic development. Building affordable housing creates construction jobs and increases the overall uh, economic base of our community. The monies of this, that the city of Eugene and the city of Springfield use to help fund affordable housing are in fact federal dollars that are coming back to our community. And most of the investment dollars that are actually used for construction come from equity investors that are often outside the state of Oregon. So we have a lot of money coming from out of the state into this community. A study by Oregon Housing and Community Services found that every one dollar invested in affordable housing, that one dollar generates as much as $15 and economic benefit across the state. Jack Roberts, who's the executive director of the Lane Metro Partnership, told me that uh, one of the first questions that potential people bringing businesses to the community ask is where are my employees going to live? I also want to welcome affordable housing to my backyard because it's the uh, right thing to do. <coughs> Hardworking people and those with special needs should be able to afford housing and still have enough money left over to buy groceries and meet other basic necessities. Food for Lane County reports that one in three people are eligible for emergency food. But how do you prepare a meal if you don't have a kitchen? How do you stay healthy if you're living on the street? If you're a diabetic, how do you keep your insulin cold if you don't have a refrigerator? How do you offer children in our community an opportunity for a safe place to live? Our nonprofit providers throughout the community are doing the, all of these things every day. We are giving our residents and families opportunities for a quality of life that most of us take for granted. We were also asked to speak about what are the opportunities and challenges we face. Well, I can state this pretty shortly and simply. Um, as far as the opportunities, the three providers here at the table and many others in our community uh, can build more affordable housing to meet the growing need uh, of those who need affordable housing uh, to reduce the long waiting list that exists now. As for the challenge, the challenge is funding, finding the necessary funding during a time of budget cuts and shrinking resources. In closing, when the Dalai Lama came to Eugene, uh, he spoke to a capacity crowd at Matthew Knight Arena, and many more listed, on, listed in, in on KLCC radio. The Dalai Lama talked about care and compassion. He emphasized that we are all brothers and sisters. And he said, prayer is not enough, that we must act, we must be in action. So I ask all of you to look for ways that you can assist families and children in our community who are struggling with the basic needs for food, clothing, and housing. And I also ask that you look for ways that you can support organizations in our community who are really doing outstanding work in this area. Thank you.